What's happening, everybody? Today, we're going to be going over some Xbox 360 pickups I recently acquired and ones that maybe if you haven't got them, you might want to put them on your list for in the future. The main reason is that the secondary market is looking like it is about to just totally wreck the prices on certain 360 games. So for me, I would prefer to get them when they're at a reasonable rate. And to be honest with you guys, a lot of the games that I got were like $10 and under. Not saying it was everything, but I did try to find the ones that I knew were on the cheap now, instead of waiting until they get inflated to God knows what. And the first two games that I have on my list for today is both Dark Souls 1 and I have Dark Souls 2 as well. So for Dark Souls 1, I ended up paying $6 for that one. And then for Dark Souls 2, it was about $15.50, maybe just like a little bit more after tax, but I believe it was $15.50 was the initial cost. And not only these two games, but the rest of the games that I'm going to be talking about here today, I sadly missed out on them while they were relevant on the 360, but they were all games that I definitely wanted to play based off of what I had previously seen on them. And from what I had heard about the Dark Souls series was that these were the types of games that made you earn a win. So sadly, it's not going to be one of those experiences for those of you that if you're looking for an easy win, I would suggest not even playing these because from what I have been told, these games can be quite difficult. Next up we got is Fable 2 and Fable 3. And from what I have been told, both of these are very good games. Although I had heard kind of mixed things about the third one saying it wasn't quite as good as the first two, but looking at how the gameplay was, I could definitely see myself enjoying playing not only Fable 2, but also playing Fable 3. So in regards to what I paid for each of these games, I paid $10.75 for Fable 2 and $6.75 for Fable 3. So I mean, for those types of prices, I mean, you can't really beat that, especially for ones that are CIB. And of course, next on our list, we have is both Dead Rising 1 and Dead Rising 2. There you go, get a good shot there. But yeah, both of these, again, all these games that I got are CIB. And this was, again, another series that, sadly, I missed out on, but I did get to play a little bit of Dead Rising 1 a long time ago. I probably only got to play maybe a little over an hour into it, but I kind of got a feel for what to expect when going in and playing it. And obviously, I figured if I was going to get the first one, I had better go ahead and just pull the trigger and get the second one. And as far as what did I pay for both of those, I paid $9 for Dead Rising 1 and $8.50 for Dead Rising 2. So again, I mean, it's under 10 bucks. And for those of us that are trying to collect our retro games, or I mean, I guess you could say that these are on the fringe of being retro at this point, but old games nonetheless, and you're trying to get them for 10 bucks and under, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. And the last game that I got is none other than a Lollipop Chainsaw. And this is actually a sealed copy that I got. And I wasn't too worried about getting it sealed. I know that some people would be like, why? Why get a sealed copy of the game? They're probably gonna do a remaster and blah, blah, blah. It's probably not gonna hold much value. I didn't get it for the value sense. I got it because I was looking at it as this is a game that I want that I wanted to play. It's brand new, so I know it's never been touched. There's gonna be no scratches, so it'll be nice and pristine. And then of course, I'm sure some of you hearing that are going, oh dear God, no! I'm a person too, Pop, God damn it. I'm a person too. You're a moron. Because you don't want me to break the seal on it. But listen, if I wanted to, I could always go ahead and get another one at some point in time just to kind of hold and collect dust. But this one is one that I wanted to play. But nonetheless, without rambling on too much more, I did pay $45 for this one. And after tax, it was probably around the 47-ish range. But nonetheless, for a sealed game, in my opinion, you can't beat that considering new games are going for 70 bucks now. So paying under 50 bucks for it, I mean, I can't be mad at it. 
But in regards to the game, all I had to see is that you wield a chainsaw around and you're killing zombies. I mean, for me personally, that was a win-win right out of the gate. But that is what I had here for today, folks. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Super Retro Force.